Our next guest is the Smarter San Diego Community Connection for Del Cerro and San Carlos. Please welcome back to the show Billy Colstock and his special guest from Solar Symphony, Mark Nelson. Welcome to the show, guys. <laughs> Thank What's you. What's up? Another great introduction, Jen. Thank, Thank you. you. Solar, big topic. We put this out on social media. Uh, I see the word nightmare in there. So we've got some things to combat, Mark. So first of all, I think let's let's cover a global topic that everyone should know about in the solar space. Uh, leasing versus owning. That seems to be what a lot of these questions and comments on social media were about. Sort of the difference between having a lien or not or owing money or borrowing. What's the difference between leasing and owning your solar? It's a great question. It comes up all the time in appointments that I have. And what I have found and my recommendation is owning is better in this environment. So when you own the system, you're going to get a, a faster payback. So your savings on your electric bill divided into the cost that you pay for the system, typically somewhere around four to seven years. And then your ROI, your ROI is going to be better. So if you can own the system and then self-finance it either through your own capital or using possibly a home equity line if you have access to it, then there's no entanglement. There's no lien on the home. If you want to pay the system off, you can at any time. Mm -hmm. and you're going to get a very, very high rate of return. Now, that's owning the system. The other option is solar loans, and I think this is where things get a little more gray. Okay. It's another option to go solar. Now, let's say you didn't have the capital available and you wanted to go solar zero down, nothing out of pocket. Okay. You can do a solar loan now. Back six, seven years ago, these weren't available. Banks just didn't know the risk associated with them, so there weren't really any options. Now, almost every solar installer now has at least two banks that they're partners with, They'll do an unsecured zero down solar loan, very easy to qualify for, shorter terms in the leases, better payments than the leases, uh, no entanglement. If you go to sell the home, it's a much easier process. You can simply, if there's still a balance on, your option is to add it in the final HUD and pay it off, or the person can just pay the loan off. Much better option. And then along with that are the PACE programs, Property Assessed Clean Energy. Property Assessed Clean Energy came on board a few years ago. You've probably heard of them. Hero would be one example. California First is another company. Green Energy is another one. They're all structured similar. This is where your payment, instead of having a monthly payment, now you have a payment that goes on your property tax bill as an assessment. Now, back in the day, a lease was the only option to go zero down. You didn't have any other options. You could save 20 to 30% on your electric bill. Mm -hmm. People love that actually your system was covered for 20 years. You don't have to worry about anything. It's all 100% taken care of. Well, the problem with leases is there's a lot of entanglement, Yes. as you've experienced, yes. of course, in, in exactly. the real estate side of the business. Mm -hmm. So you typically have a higher payment than any sort of solar loan. The terms are longer 20 years. They have inflated buyouts, so it's very expensive to get out of those loans. They typically don't let you really buy them out until after six years because they're taking on some appreciated depreciate or some accelerated depreciation. So the leasing companies love them. They, they do very, very well on those. Not so great for the consumer. I think you even mentioned also in our conversations previously about the technology. Technology is moving faster than what the leases would the 20 years. Uh -huh. Right. That makes sense. Billy, I, before we get to some of the social media stuff, I think we should address a couple of these things um, that people were commenting about. What is the benefit to the homeowner from a value standpoint? Because obviously it makes the home more green. You can save money on electricity. Um, does it add value to a property? You know, I actually talked to an appraiser about that actual question, and he said right now appraisers are not adding value for leases, but if they have enough information in the area, they can add value on the appraisal for solar panels. Gotcha. Now, but that, that's, that being take aside, everyone's looking for solar. When a buyer sees solar on a home, they're excited. They're excited that that's there. They want to know that, uh, you know, that they're saving money. To add to Billy's comment, so Berkeley Labs up in San Francisco did a study a couple of years ago. They took like 22,000 sales in I think eight states. 4,000 of those sales had solar on them. They found that the added value was about $4 a watt. And what that translates into a typical system here in San Diego is about six kilowatts. So it's about 24 grand in value. Now, it's not that straightforward. You do, just as Billy stated, the appraiser has to find comparables that have sold one with and one without to really give it true value. But on the leases, you're exactly right, because that homeowner does not own that system. That is owned by the leasing company. There's no real value associated with it. Yeah. I, even, I even looked inside one of the leases, and it actually says that oh. this is not a fixture. 
right. yet it's attached to the house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, Maybe that's what some of these people uh, are having issues with, Jen. What, what do we got on, what is Facebook? Want to know? Well, on the Smarter solar. San Diego Facebook page, we had a lot of um, varying opinions, let's say. Kyle Whistle wrote, hero equals nightmare. <laughs> it's the worst financing ever. Crazy fees and interest rate and a pain in the butt when selling. What do you think? Yeah. Is that, does that sound uh, correct, Billy, <laughs> what he's talking about? Because he's talking about one of those programs there. Sorry. Yeah, so, you know, I had a great experience with hero, but only in some por part because the seller elected to pay off the entire uh, lean amount. Uh, so that was a good experience there. We've had experiences where it did stop a transaction, a lease did stop a transaction because the buyer was not willing to take on the lease terms that the seller agreed to. Interesting. And so the, that person even went to that leasing company and attempted to renegotiate the lease, redefine some of those terms, and the leasing company stead was steadfast on what they agreed to with the previous owner. So. You know, unless we find, you know, people who are willing to take on those leases at those current terms, we're not going to sell that house. Okay. That's, that's stressful. That's really stressful for all the parties involved. Not mm -hmm. only the seller, the buyer, the agents, everybody involved. That creates just another piece that you're having to deal with through that escrow process. And that's not any fun. Yeah. Jen, was there anything positive on Facebook? There was a positive. There was a positive. <laughs> all right. We got some positive. <laughs> Jose Valenzuela said, I've had several clients refinance and Hero was easy to subordinate and hasn't been in the way of any of my deals. Okay, so, so it's kind of seeing, yeah, I mean, it's Hero equals nightmare, Hero equals no problem. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it does matter, you know, who yes. who the homeowner is and what they're, what they're trying to do. Because if you're refinancing, that's different than if you're selling. Correct. Sure. Right, because you're subordinating yeah. the lien to refinance, but you're basically putting it in the same place where it was before. Yep. But when you sell, need to be able to get that thing out of there yeah go away. Right. and let's make it very clear it's possible to find those people because like what we're saying buyers are excited when they find out that they have solar it's just that we have to find the right person who's going to be excited to take on the lease yeah. if it's a if it's a lease or take on the loan or the financing that the seller has in place yep. mark i'd love to ask you this question absolutely there's a lot of solar companies out there if you listen yeah. to the radio or anything like that you're going to hear a lot of solar <sighs> advertisements how do you research a good solar company if you're a consumer? Can you give me just like the top couple things that you should look for? Yeah, absolutely. There is a lot of information out there on solar right now, so you get inundated, whether it's infomercials or, or, or on the radio. My recommendation is talk to neighbors. Every neighborhood has solar in it. That's the first place I'd go. Talk to family and friends. You're going to get a real honest opinion that way. I'd always tell people, look at the contractor state license board. Make sure that they're licensed. You know, I, everybody's had a contractor nightmare, whether you're doing a remodel or something where the person just didn't come through. Same way in the solar business. You want to do your research and make sure that you're finding the right company. So That's fantastic advice. I really appreciate you guys coming in today and sharing this with us. Oh, absolutely. Fantastic yeah, stuff. Glad to. Stick around for more Smarter San Diego TV, where we guarantee to make you smarter than everyone else. Commercial free.